Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly update show. Hope everybody is doing okay. Nothing to write home about during the regular session. Um, I thought the market uh, did a really, really good job. Uh, I thought they did an exceptional job. I think the back test continued from our breakout from three, four days ago, orderly reclaimed uh, not only this back test, but also reclaimed the five day moving average on the close. The Dow held fairly, fairly well, a very uneventful day. And if you guys remember on uh, last night's video, um, I wasn't sell bias, okay? I even said in the video, I go, I'm not sell bias. There's just kind of more things at the bottom of the range. And just in case, if we pull one more day, there'll be some opportunities. Well, there was some opportunities. Uh, problem is I missed them all. I literally missed them all. Um, and after the first literally 15 minutes of the day, it was over. The, the day was absolutely over. Uh, everything was trading you know, within a dollar range of each other. Nothing was going on. And that was actually a good thing. You know, if you're a bull, the last thing you wanted to see was the cues give back not only the five day moving average, but to give back also the 296.75 level that we started the whole breakout in the first place. So everything was all good. Uh, you look at the spies, non-event did exactly the same thing, just hugging the five day moving average. And as unless you're uh, completely under a rock and you don't know what's going on after the close, Walmart decided to put a little bit of a damper of what's going on or what happened uh, in the last three, four days. And after the close, uh, Walmart uh, guides lower, they cut their forecasts. And as you can imagine, well, you know, we kind of knew the economy wasn't great to begin with. Uh, unfortunately, the White House is telling us something, something different. But in case you didn't know, well, the, the economy is not great. And so not only is Walmart getting absolutely destroyed after the close, it's taking down any, anything to do with retail. You got Kohl's uh, getting absolutely squashed. Uh, not Kohl's, excuse me. Uh, well, it's Kohl's down also. But you got Target that's getting killed. You got Amazon. Again, if they're not spending money, uh, if they're not spending money in Target, right? In Walmart, they're sure as hell not spending any money on Amazon. And, and you go through the whole retail list, you'll kind of see everything uh, one by one. Costco, Etsy, this one, that one. But the most important part is when you look at uh, the indexes after the close, spies are only down 70 cents, which is very, very odd. I thought, oh my God, everything's gonna be down like three, four dollars after the close. And the NASDAQ, which again, it definitely has some representation uh, in retail. You got Shopify, you got Amazon. Um, I don't remember if Etsy is part of the NASDAQ 100, maybe it is. But the point is you, you look and you, you, you look at one eye open, you say, well, maybe, maybe these things are not that bad. And I, I think tomorrow, um, I, I think tomorrow uh, could be, you know, kind of an important day. You know, no matter what uh, the market has uh, kind of established the last few days, and I think, you know, they did a pretty, you know, pretty good job of, of reclaiming big levels, reality, right? Reality is kind of the curveball that could derail uh, this whole train moving forward. And tomorrow, um, you know, we have kind of the start of a pretty big uh, earnings week. You got Microsoft, that big put buyers all day. You got Google, um, some notable put buyers uh, today all day. Um, you had NVIDIA, which was very, very odd. NVIDIA had monster put buying, 160 weekly puts coming in, considering they don't report till August very very odd bets you know maybe they were uh maybe there were people were making covered you know maybe they were trying to cover some other uh semiconductor exposure but some very very odd bets so i i think tomorrow uh is going to be an important level uh today's trading day i i hell i might as well have taken today off um i had a plan at the open um and we talked about it last night on the video there was some names you know that i like to the downside the problem is i got the wrong ones the ones that went down three four dollars i missed the ones that went down 30 cents, yeah, boy, yeah. So yeah, that's that was kind of my day. But the most important part, I think, going into tomorrow's session is, number one, we, we wanna see if this indeed, right? If this indeed was indicative of, hey, this is reality versus the stock market's reality, then yes, the bulls have uh, every opportunity to give up 
uh, everything, right? Literally everything uh, that they worked hard for for the last three, four days. But there's a flip side to this as well. And we talk about this all the time. Sometimes news is just news, right? Sometimes it's interpreted bad. Sometimes it's interpreted good. We've seen a lot of bad news interpreted good. And you see the stock going the other direction. Here is going to be a challenge, right? And the question is now that it's not like, you know, a stock like a snow you know, is, is warning guidance. Okay, most people don't know what snow is. This is Walmart, right? You know, all of us have been to a Walmart, to a Target. Some of us go to Target for freaking cleaning supplies with their wife and somehow spend two and a half, three hours there. But that's a different story. And also, allegedly, love you, sweetie. But the point is, if middle America, well, not middle America, if Mer Americans are not spending money, and this is a global nationals, and people around the world is not spending money, then you have to understand, well, again, this is the reality, something has to give here. And you know, these are gonna be the key levels going into tomorrow. No matter what you think is gonna happen uh, today, uh, going into tomorrow's session, again, face value in the market means absolutely nothing. All right, remember, keep in mind, we had a global pandemic, right? And the market went to all time highs. Now they introduce monkeypox. Apparently monkeypox is the next thing, right? Don't make out with strangers, right? Delete your twin Tinder account. I don't know. I don't know how this damn thing is spread. But the point is, look, we have a completely different society right now. We have a completely different market than it was 20, 30 years ago. The point is face value sometimes is good, sometimes is bad, and it all depends how uh, they perceive it. So kind of going into tomorrow, I mean, look, there's definitely names I, I like to the downside. Uh, that's for sure, right? You know, Google reports tomorrow, you know, it really couldn't rally today. I'm still watching the bottom of the channel here. As we, we talked about last night, this whole level here, I'm still watching. Who knows? Maybe they sell this thing off ahead of earnings. Uh, I'm still watching the video uh, for tomorrow. Again, that, you know, for some reason, they're just going to bombing, bombing those uh, one, you know, 160 puts today. It just It's just weird considering it's 10 points out of the money and they don't have a catalyst this week. Again, all these odd bets are, well, hell, they're odd. They bring to your attention, just like the way the guy, some guy bet, uh, bought the 130 puts uh, into the close on Walmart today, right? On Walmart, a million dollars worth of premium. Nobody knows anything, right? Nobody knows anything. Nobody's afraid to go to jail. This is pure coincidence and people are phenomenal guessers. So again, based on what we saw today on the option flow in the video, again, it's our duty at least to watch it. Tesla, I thought, did very, very well today. Tesla was one of those names today that even when the market pulled in, and yeah, granted, it was down $11, but the stock is up $97 in the last three days, okay? You got a nice little pullback here. I think in a perfect world on Tesla, and we saw some pretty good call buying towards the end of the week. We saw some 840s, we saw some 850s, we saw a little bit of 800s. So I would like to see Tesla at some point tomorrow, the next day, but some point in the next couple of days, retest this five-day moving average. This is kind of where the whole breakout uh, came out. And if you look at the volume, and this is kind of the key here, you know, people always talk about, well, it went down a lighter volume. Yeah, this is one of those cases. If you look at the volume from uh, three days ago, look how big the volume was, right? Look what happened and look what happened the next day, right? Smaller volume today is the smallest volume of all. So you, you kind of turn around and go, oh, you know, the bulls, you know, the sellers are feeling comfortable. And that's exactly what the bulls need to do. The bulls need to make sure that the sellers are comfortable. So if they get down to the five day moving average, they can get trapped. And if they do get trapped and they defend the five day moving average, then Tesla uh, wakes up and you're going to see an expansion channel. But again, we're not there yet. We're just preparing for it. So it's very, very tough to turn around and make a definitive statement any single day. Like I've, I've always said in every single broadcast, nobody knows what the market's going to do. Okay. Only thing we could do is prepare for it. Today, an incredibly slow day. I guess if I would have caught the right names at the open, maybe it would have been a slow day for me. But the point is I kind of missed my window. I know some of you guys caught some stuff. I missed it. I missed anything that went down three, four dollars. I missed but I was chilling with all those stocks that went down like 30, 40 cents that I wound up breaking even on. Dope. And that's why we play the game. So let's talk about today's day. Uh, let's talk about today's session. Again, this is kind of what we talked about um, you know, over the weekend. We talked about this pre-market. Uh, Friday, well-deserved rest by the bulls, successfully tested the five-day support. Uh, the, you know, the result are, are tight channels today, right? That's what we talk about. We, we talk about very, very tight channels. Say we expected a very, very tight day, not 
it's over after 10 o'clock, but it was a relatively tight day. 300 of support, that's where the, the, the bulls uh, held and reclaimed at the close. Uh, any close below is a problem, so the, needs, the bulls need to defend that level, and they did. And here's kind of the notes going into, into the day. Expect a tight day on both ways. Again, trade quarter, third size for cash flow. You're not going to make or break the day. It's just kind of more of where we are to kind of what we expect. And the day kind of played out exactly that way for the exception of, hell, I could have turned off my machine uh, at 10 o'clock. So let's talk about it. You know, so Google reports tomorrow, you know, 106.50, 106. I'm still watching that level in case they come forward tomorrow. NVIDIA, I miss NVIDIA. Don't ask me what I was doing, but I miss NVIDIA. And this is perfect, right? NVIDIA. Scalp set up 171. If it builds below, can see 169 and then 177 in the 70s. What the hell was I doing today, right? Where the hell was I? So it takes out the 171, takes out uh, takes out the 69, and trades right to the bottom uh, of the band at one, uh, 166 and change. I don't know what the hell I was doing, but I wasn't in the video. If all you guys got it, congratulations. And then Snow, again, don't ask me what the hell I was doing, but I literally missed everything that went down three, four dollars, and I was in everything that was down three, 30, 40 cents. Don't ask me why, but it is. Snow, 140, 140, 140, 141, if it builds below. You can see a two-point move to the 50-day moving average. That's exactly what it did. Uh, actually, it went down a little bit more. Uh, notable buyer came in, just as an FYI, notable buyer came in for the August 130 puts, and that is betting uh, into earnings. So if you look at Snow, again, don't ask me what I was doing. Here's the 140, 140, and it traded right to the 50-day moving average. Again, my head was somewhere knee deep in my own, let's keep it PG. Uh, Cano never went. Uh, coin, again, what the hell was I doing today? I missed every damn stock that went down three, four points. Coin, 69, if it builds below, can flush. Here was coin. I literally missed, literally missed everything today. So here was the 69, it took out 69, traded down to 66. Yeah, I guess if I would have just caught one of these damn things, at least, at least the day would have been fine. I, I miss literally everything. And then here, here's me fighting, right? Here's me fighting. So instead of all these, I short meta, right? 68 if it gets below, can, can, can snap. So I short meta, it goes down like 30, 40 cents, blah, blah, blah. The futures recover, uh, break even on the trade. Okay, I suck. Okay, letter U, a short letter U goes down like 40 cents. I don't, you know, I don't cover anything. You know, I think the stock's gonna go down to like 34 and a half. Don't cover any blah, 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 break even, right? So dope, I'm having a great day here. Uh, Tesla, there was a couple of remounts. I caught one for a cup of coffee. Again, I just couldn't get anything really going today. Uh, and that's it. And I said, literally, this is four hours ago. Guys, think about this. It's, um, it's five o'clock right now. So four hours ago was what, one o'clock after lunch? I said, the day is just over. It's just absolutely over. And that's exactly what happened. So uh, the fireworks, unfortunately, at least for the bulls, at least face value, uh, came after the close. Retail is obviously the dominant area. Um, so obviously going into tomorrow, yeah, you know, I'm watching a bunch of uh, retail names. You know, you have to watch the names just in case they don't recover. So if Walmart, uh, you know, if Walmart is just taking out opening range lows tomorrow, yeah, we got to start watching some retail names. Usually not a group that I would watch, but hell, if this is the you know deciding factor and Main Street meets Wall Street and everything's crappy and everybody has monkey pox and everybody's miserable, well, again, nobody, you know, we don't want to put the, the cart in front of the horse, but we know the level, right? We know the big level. And we got to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt, especially in the NASDAQ. Remember, the Walmart is spies. Walmart is the doubt. You know, there could be an, an, an obvious disconnect. It's very, very possible from technology, from retail. The problem is some retail is our technology, Amazon, Shopify, Etsy, right? So we have a little bit of a curveball. But again, that's what this business is. There's days that are very, very clean. There's days that are very, very clear. Your research is telling you everything is premium. Everything is good to go. And then there's days like today. So you wake up and you go, you research and you're like, well, wait a minute. The channels are very, very tight. You know, let's trade. This is eight hours ago. It, you know, everything's tight. Trade quarter, third size. This is not the day you're going to make your bones. And unfortunately, that's the way uh, the market played itself out. So tomorrow, I'm optimistic, right? I'm optimistic. Maybe we have one more day of rest, but just keep that level in mind, guys, especially in the NASDAQ 100. As long as we are closing above 296.75 on the Qs, you got to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. As soon as we start closing below 296.75, that's the problem because that is the 50 day moving average that we reclaimed. And obviously that would be a very, very big disappointment from all the bulls if we close below. But again, let's not put the cart in front of the horse. 
let's see how everything plays out. So that's it, guys. Have a great night, everybody. Again, don't kiss no strangers. Monkeypox. <laughs> right? Disgusting. Guys, have a great night. God bless. Hope everybody stays safe. And I'll see you all tomorrow.